Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In this video, I thought I would give a quick introduction to what I eat on the carnivore diet. For those who do not know already, a carnivore diet is basically a diet that consists of only animal products. And so if it comes from an animal, you can eat it. That is basically the simplest definition there is. However, there is some nuance uh, depending on who you talk to. Like any other diet, there is a spectrum. There are people that are more on the uh, strict, more extreme end of it. And then there's some people that are more on the lenient, more moderate side of it. I would like to think I'm somewhere in the middle. So yeah, we won't get too much into labels today. I just wanted to explain what I eat uh, in the diet, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Carnivore diet is basically a diet that consists of only animal products. Let's start with the thing that everybody thinks about when it comes to the carnivore diet, and that is meat. So let's talk about proteins. So what proteins do I include in my carnivore diet? I include a lot of proteins. The first type of protein that I eat on the carnivore diet, and it's probably the one I eat the most, is beef. Beef is very nutrient dense and very satisfying, which is why I include it in pretty much every single meal that I eat. And so I eat a lot of beef. I eat steaks, ground beef, burger patties, roasts. If it's beef, I will eat it and it's delicious. <laughs> the second protein that I eat a lot of would probably have to be pork. I do eat a lot of pork and I love it. So ground pork, bacon, roasts, pork loin, bacon, yeah, pork belly. <laughs> So I do eat a lot of pork. When it comes to the pork, I can't eat the stuff that is sold at a traditional grocery store. So any pork that is conventionally raised factory farm, I can't eat. I tend to react to it. I just don't feel good when eating it. And honestly, it doesn't taste that good to me. So I always buy my pork from a local farm. So I always make sure that it's pastured, that the pigs are being able to forage and eat minimal grains. And if they do eat grains, make sure it's GMO free grains. And so that is me uh, when it comes to the pork. If you can eat store-bought pork, that is totally fine. This is um, what I need to do in order for me to me feel my best. The third type of protein that I eat will have to be chicken. I love chicken, especially chicken wings. Um, that's pretty much the main thing that I eat is chicken wings, maybe ground chicken every now and then, and maybe like thighs, like chicken thighs every now and then. But honestly, I'm not a big fan of chicken thighs or chicken drumsticks for that matter. So it usually ends up being mostly chicken wings that I do eat. Um, but they're so good. They're so delicious. I just put a little bit of salt in there, and roast them in the oven and they come out so crispy and delicious. It's awesome. So I do eat a lot of chicken. Same with the pork. I have to buy chicken from a local farm. It has to be pastured chicken because I do react to the store-bought factory farmed chicken. And honestly, it doesn't taste that good to me either. It has like almost like a chemically taste to me. So that is just preference of mine. And I just feel better eating um, pastured chicken. Um, but yeah, my diet mainly consists of beef, pork and chicken. I usually do a mix of those. Those are my main staple proteins that I include on the carnivore diet. There are a couple other things that I do include, but I eat it very minimally. Um, but I thought I would mention here, I do eat turkey. It's usually in the form of ground turkey or deli meat, very rarely. So I do eat turkey just very, very little because there's not a lot, honestly, there's not a lot of fat to it and I don't really like it as much, but if it's an option, I will eat it. Um, I do also eat lamb and bison. Um, those are also two other ruminant meats along with beef that are very uh, nutrient dense and very satisfying. I don't really like the taste of lamb, so I usually only eat it in ground form and I mix it with like beef so I don't taste the lamb nearly as much. Um, but that is just a preference of mine. And then I don't eat a lot of bison because it's not very fatty. And so it's not very satisfying to me. Also, I have a hard time finding it within my budget. And so I don't eat a lot of it. But when I see ground bison affordable at the store, I do buy it and I do eat it occasionally. Um, my doctor has recommended me eating more lamb and more bison to increase my copper levels because I have low copper levels. So I uh, do try to eat a little bit of those each week. So when I'm able to get it. Now let's talk about the couple proteins that I don't really eat on the carnivore diet. So I don't eat eggs. I have a love-hate relationship when it comes to eggs. I do like eggs, 
but if I eat too many eggs, I tend to not feel as great. I get sick of them. And so I don't really include eggs. I tried to, I started craving eggs at the beginning of this month. And so I started including them. So I included them for maybe a week, maybe two, and I ended up getting so sick of them. And also I started getting more dandruff lots of dandruff. So I'm just like, yeah, eggs don't agree with me. So eggs are going to probably be relegated to every now and then when I crave them and then only for short periods of time. So I really don't eat eggs. I know eggs are a big cheap staple on the carnivore diet. So if you can eat them, definitely eat them, go for it. Uh, but I'm going to keep them out. And then seafood. I also have a love-hate relationship with seafood. I don't really like seafood. I don't like the fishy taste. I prefer seafood if it's breaded or has a ton of flavor and those are kind of like, I can't do that on the carnivore diet really, <laughs> or my version of the carnivore diet. And so I have been trying seafood every now and then to see if I can eat it, uh, see if I can like it and I haven't had much luck. So every now and then I will try again, but right now I don't eat a lot of seafood on my carnivore diet. Um, but I do supplement with a fish oil capsule so I can get some of those omega-3s in me because omega-3s are definitely good for you. You can get omega-3s from pastured, raised, ruminant meats, um, but seafood has definitely has a higher amount of omega-3s and I do want to include those in my diet, but right now it has to be supplemented. But maybe someday I will like seafood and include it in the diet. And then the other thing that I'm going to get a question about, do I eat organ meats? And the answer is I should be eating organ meats, but I'm not. So my doctor is trying to get me to eat more organ meats so I can work on my copper levels as well. And honestly, I hate the taste. I really do. I've been like cutting up beef blubber and freezing it and then swallowing it. Um, in the morning kind of like a pill and that's the only way that I've been able to tolerate it. We did try um, pork tongue a while back and that was pretty good and I did buy a beef tongue. We have yet to try that and I was going to try that and see how that goes but it seems like tongue is probably the only organ meat. Yes it is considered organ meat. Uh, tongue is the only organ meat that we can tolerate really. So so does everybody need to include organ meats in their diet? No, I don't think so. But for me, I'm a special, special butterfly that needs to include them and I need to figure out a way to eat them. So I might just end up getting those desiccated liver capsules and taking them that way. But right now I'm trying my best to do it with fresh liver and see how that goes. So I think that pretty much covers all the proteins that I eat. I try to eat them in their fresh, unadulterated form, minimally processed. So I don't eat a lot of processed meats. I do eat deli meat on occasion, but I try to get it the cleanest deli meat possible. And then, yeah, I don't eat that many like cured meats or like processed meats and stuff like that. So I try to be as whole food based, whole meat based, whole food meat based as possible when it comes to that. Now let's talk about fats. So when you're on the carnivore diet, you have your proteins and you have your fats and then very minimal carbs, depending on how much plants you include in your diet. And so let's talk about fats really quick. Um, fats, the only fats that I use will be beef tallow, pork lard, and then whatever leftover bacon grease or leftover uh, fat that is rendered from me cooking either beef or pork. Um, and that's pretty much what I do. I can't do dairy. I can't even do butter. And so I don't include butter in my carnivore diet. And then I don't like ghee. You know, um, if you can't handle butter, sometimes you can handle ghee, but I don't like the taste of ghee. So I don't include ghee either. So I don't do any dairy at all. So that's why I need to rely heavily on the tallow, the lard and leftover grease to get more fat in on my carnivore diet. And when you're on the carnivore diet, you don't do any vegetable oils of any kind. So no vegetable oils. Those are not good for you. They're rancid. They're gross. They don't make you feel good. So we stay away from those. And then we also stay away from like the good, healthy keto fats as well. So no avocado oil, no olive oil, and no coconut oil. Um, unless you're able to tolerate it. So, but yeah, I don't include those. I stay with the animal fats. I use those fats for cooking my meats and I use it to like put flavor and top my meats as well. So that is pretty much the bulk of the carnivore diet. You got your proteins and then you got your fats. I thought I would talk a little bit more about the other things I do include on my diet that veers a little bit more towards not carnivore. Um, 
but I'm still pretty much 90, 95% carnivore. Flu. So don't shoot me. So for drinks, let's talk about what I drink. So I obviously drink water. I drink filtered water, make sure I filtered that. Um, so I drink lots of water. I do use electrolytes. I do the element electrolytes, the raw unflavored. So there's no flavor and there's no sweeteners. So it's just the sodium, the magnesium and the potassium. And I just put that in drinking water and I drink that throughout the day just to help with my electrolyte balance because you do need electrolytes, same as keto. You do need electrolytes on the carnivore diet. I have found that I do need more electrolytes on the carnivore diet compared to the keto diet. So I do include electrolytes, but they're unflavored and they're unsweetened. I also include sparkling water and I make sure that it's unflavored and unsweetened. I have tried to cut this out of my diet, but honestly, it's just bubbly water and it's really helpful, especially when I have a stomach ache or when I'm cramping on my period. So I decided to keep it in and it's a, honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but I definitely stay away from the flavored ones because I do react to natural flavors. And so I stay away from the flavored ones, honestly, like plain sparkling water. It was an adjustment to get used to just the plain sparkling water, but honestly, I don't really need flavor uh, when it comes to the sparkling water anymore. And then obviously it needs to be unsweetened because I don't do great with sweeteners. I don't even do great with artificial sweeteners. So they need to be out of my diet. One of the reasons why keto did not really work for me and why carnivore is better, but I'll probably make a video about that later. Um, and then I do occasionally include herbal tea. I use herbal tea uh, for medicinal purposes. Um, I drink, um, let's talk about the types of teas that I use. Um, I drink chamomile tea just to help with stress and calm me down. I drink ginger tea when my stomach is acting up um, that's very soothing for the stomach. And then what else do I drink? Um, oh, raspberry leaf tea I drink to help support my menstrual cycle. I'm hoping that I can cut that out eventually once my menstrual cycles bounce out a little bit. Um, but that's pretty much the majority of what I drink. I do drink uh, dandelion tea occasionally when I feel like I need a little boost in detox. And then I do have like um, a smooth smooth, what they call tea to help with bowel movements in case I need it. So pretty much I drink your herbal tea, but it's for medicinal purposes. Um, and I think that is okay. And then for what I don't drink, I don't drink caffeine. So I don't drink um, coffee. I don't drink uh, caffeinated tea, like green tea or black tea. So no caffeine. I don't need caffeine in my diet. The only time I drink caffeine is when I'm going on a long drive, but that is very rarely. So that's the only time I need caffeine, but regularly I don't drink caffeine because I don't need it. And I find that it stimulates me too much and I have a propensity to have adrenal problems. So I don't drink the caffeine. So yeah, I don't drink coffee. I know a lot of carnivore people do still drink coffee. My husband still drinks coffee, but I don't like coffee. I don't like the smell. I don't like the taste. So I've never included coffee in my diet. And then I don't drink alcohol. Very rarely I drink alcohol. So um, it does make me feel good. And then it just stops you from digesting your food properly when you do drink it. So I don't drink alcohol as well. So that's pretty much everything that I drink on the carnivore diet. And now let's talk about flavor. I am one of those people that I have to include flavor. I have to include some sort of plant substances <laughs> to flavor my meat. Otherwise, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stay on the carnivore diet because plain meat just tastes awful to me. So I have to include some sort of flavor. Most carnivores include salt, and that's not a plant, that's a mineral. So that is included on the carnivore, like a strict carnivore diet is salt. So I do use sea salt and smoked salt. Oh my gosh, if you haven't tried smoked salt, you definitely do. It's like you put it on your meat and it's like you grilled the meat. Or like, like barbecued the meat, like over wood or over charcoal. Oh my gosh, it tastes so good. So yeah, those two are included on a more stricter carnivore diet. But I also include some a little bit of plants every now and then so I can enjoy my food. So the pretty much I only I'm keeping this pretty minimal when it comes to the flavors. I used to include a lot of herbs and spices and low sugar sauces, but now like whittling them down because I found out that a lot of them don't make me feel good. So um, so I'm trying to get to the point where I'm only using salt, smoked salt, 
um, mustard. I have found a nightshade free along with a turmeric free. I, can't, <laughs> I react to nightshades and turmeric and I found a mustard that fits the bill and it's pretty good. I enjoy it with my burgers. And then I use coconut aminos that replaces soy sauce. My husband and I like a lot of Asian flavors and I use coconut aminos for that. And then I use apple cider vinegar for a tangy. And then I do use, don't shoot me, I do use raw honey every now and then just for flavoring and not a lot of it, just a little bit to take the bitter edge off. So if you're able to moderate that, you can include it. Just don't include like a ton of it. My goodness. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's a reason why people thrive on the carnivore diet is because it's low in sugar. And so don't be adding a ton of honey into it. So I just use it for flavorings and for marinades and that's about it. But yeah, so yeah, I'm slowly figuring out what herbs and spices and flavors I can and can't eat. And I wanted to mention a couple of things that I found out that I can't eat and just in case you might need to experiment with that. So I can't do black pepper. I know a lot of people include salt and pepper, but I can't do black pepper. It's too high in oxalates and it makes me hurt and makes me sneeze and I don't like it. I also don't do turmeric. Um, that also makes me hurt. It is also a high oxalate food. I also found out that I can't do sage. That's so random, isn't it? I've been able to tolerate most herbs, but sage seems to make me hurt <laughs> as well. And so I don't, I'm not going to do sage anymore as well. And then I don't include garlic or onion, um, just because they make me bloat. They make me gassy. Um, but if you're able to tolerate onions and garlic, that is really nice for flavoring for simple, minimal flavoring on the carnivore diet, but I can't include those cause they make me bloated. It's very sad. So, but yeah, I've been trying to minimize what I eat when it comes to flavor. So I'm using it very, very little nowadays. So yeah. So that's pretty much everything that I include currently on my carnivore diet. I am constantly experimenting and changing. So I might have to make an update video in the future um, if I make any major changes. But yeah, I just make sure I get my protein, I get enough fat and then um, have minimal flavor, minimal plants just to give, make my carnivore diet sustainable. And I just wanna mention here that I don't eat carnivore perfectly but that is okay. <laughs> I, uh, there are just some days where I'm just like the cravings get too much or I make a mistake or I make a poor decision and stuff like that. And that is okay. That doesn't mean I'm off the carnivore diet. That just means that I had a bit of a bump in the road and then I need to get right back into it. And so what I have told you here today is what my ideal carnivore diet is. This is the diet that makes me feel my best and this is the diet that I should be eating. But yeah, I'm not perfect and I'm gonna mess up and that is okay. I'm reminding this <laughs> to myself and just to let you, to remind you out there that you don't have to be perfect to see progress. You don't have to be 100% perfect to see healing. And if you mess up, that is okay. You just go back to carnivore the next day back to the way of eating that makes you feel your best. So pretty much you just figure out how you feel your best and then strive to do that every single day. And yeah, that is what I do. Well, I hope that this was coherent. I felt like I might've been a bit rambly and if I did, I apologize. And so yeah, but that is pretty much what I eat on my version of the carnivore diet. Uh, please don't take this as a blueprint for what you should be eating on your carnivore diet. You need to decide for yourself what makes you feel the best. This video may have given you some ideas, some things to experiment with, and that's great. Um, but definitely don't copy me. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to figure things out for myself. I might be making some changes here in the next couple months. Um, but yeah, just figure out what works for you and go for it. Yep. So that is it for today. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.